discussion at the end so that we can hear what your thoughts are. All right, so we're going to start right now with the Treasurer's Report with Chris Young, our Treasurer. Chris? Thank you. Uh, just a quick update since the last meeting, we added 10 additional payments. Current balance in the account $23,594. And we also set up a for the monthly contribution leader at, at Century Bank. You're going to be able to just drop off checks to her, she'll call the pocket, get it to us, we'll get to the box. So we try to make it so it's very, very easy. Someone in the neighborhood is always there. Now with the 
with uh, the seaport and with Back Bay. And we sat down through several meetings. We meet once a week, and we're trying to figure out what to do to help the neighborhood out as far as business goes. And uh, why we haven't taken advantage of Little Italy in all these years is, is a puzzle amongst all of us. We are Little Italy. We've been Little Italy for, for 90 years. You can, a tourist comes to the North End, and I'll bet you 80% of them are coming here for Mike's Pastry, not for the Paul Rivera House. You know, the, the Italians did create this neighborhood. We made it what it is. You know, some of you younger guys, you know, maybe you don't remember the way back, but, you know, old ladies were cleaning the streets and everybody was speaking Italian. It was a good neighborhood. It was a good community. And we can keep that feel and we can keep that spirit, that rhythm, that vibrancy of a little Italy. And to be the only existing legitimate little Italy in the country is big. You know, one thing that's a little bothersome and that we're trying to correct is that you, you um, if you're from Boston, North End, oh yeah, North End, the little. But if you're not from Boston, and you see North End, East, uh, South End, West End, East Boston, uh, South Boston, you have no idea that the North End is what it is. You know, there have been many times I've run into Italian tourists at the Common, and I say, hey, you meant to, you know, you strike conversation with them, have you meant to the North End? They're literally, they're like, what? It's not out there that we are Little Italy. We need to embrace that. And we need to continue those traditions, not only uh, as a business community, but, and I do understand that everyone's not Italian in the neighborhood, and, and that's okay, that's fine. But when you're in this neighborhood, you're here because you did like that Italian spirit, the lifestyle, the camaraderie, the friendship, the love, the wine, the food, you know, the fashion, everything that Italians have to offer to this country. And it would be a shame for us to let little Italy die. We need to continue this. We need to continue this for the young guys that are opening businesses. You know, Marco, Rob, uh, Massimo. Massimo's not that young, but they <laughs> look young. <laughs> but, you know, and, and uh, our efforts, you know, uh, the, the taxi talks, the commercial, which I don't know if we're showing that sure today. Yeah. So I think in order for us to, to, to grab our share of the business in Boston, to compete with the seaport, to compete with all these other peoples, we should brand this little Italy and we should do it with some, some pride and some strength. Thank you, Damien. Great job. Okay, so to stay consistent with that theme, I'm repeating myself what we started with the taxi talks and we're promoting the North End, 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 the North podcast with many of the channels and Allison will tell us more about that. And we're going to have bumper stickers soon. And the bumper stickers, again, are going to keep the same theme. Sorry we don't have them for you now. We're on order, but they're going to say, follow me to the North End. Again, the same theme with our logo, which you see in the upper left hand corner of the taxi talk. Little Italy, North End Chamber of Commerce. So we'll be giving these all up to you folks for free, and we want to see them on every car. One problem with this, though, is people might start following you, and if you go outside of the North End, they may follow you outside the North End. You need to make sure that you bring them back into the North End. We're following the side of the North End. All right. Um, that was a little joke. I love writing the podcast. Frank got it, so that's a great one. Um, member decals. Do you have a member decal on your table? And this is for every business owner that is a member of the North End Chamber of Commerce. It's very easy. We hope you put them on your establishment, and oh, it's a good way to identify them as part of the Chamber of Commerce. It's also a good way to keep the theme going. And I hope you all like it. If you like these, give us a round of applause.
sees these are all proudly put on the doorposts or the windows, you'll realize that the North End Chamber of Commerce is a powerful organization in the business community. It seems simplistic and even somewhat absurd. It's very important, it's really, it's really useful. It's, uh, so put these on proudly. It's a bit of our simple time. It's a bit of our okay? Thank you very much. All right, now we're going to show, if you can all just turn, face the boy who's been in the street here. This is a part of what I want to take away. One of the things that we want to be um, cognizant of when we, when we put this ad together, we want to make sure it was generic and that it's not to advertise any particular business in the North End, but just to get the theme going of a wonderful place this is. This is the North End, it's Little Italy, it's our North End. And so you'll see that you won't be seeing many heads um, in these shots. But the reason for that is we want to protect the identity and also the work. We're not focusing on any particular individual or any particular business. I just want to this is say Allison from Comcast. Yes, I'm Allison from Comcast. For a little bit more, the last name. Uh, I kind of just went over the different networks, the high profile places that this ad is going to be. Red Sox games, things like that. They're uh, really great places, Food Network. Um, and now we put the actual ad together. And I just want to say thank you to members and the board of uh, the Chamber for assisting with this and really getting it all together. I, I'm really happy with how this looks. Thank you to Matt Conti for your footage that you put into the piece, too. It looks awesome. So I hope you guys like it as well. This is my room.
in the future, if you're interested in participating in having your restaurant featured, or you featured, or your chef featured, with the name of your restaurant, we are going to do that. But this time, we wanted to have, as I say, a very generic ad that didn't promote any particular restaurant or entity to just promote in the North End. And I hope you feel we accomplished that. That was our goal, and um, hopefully we, we got that done. So, Filippo, thank you, and we, we looked into that, and we will definitely fix it that this future. Anybody have any questions? Uh, and, um, is that available online if you want to? Yeah, um, Allison? Sorry, what? What's the availability online? Yes, that's going to be on Xfinity.com as well. No, I mean, if you want to like, email to someone. Or, oh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah. what, what we're hoping to do with that, the next thing we're going to touch on, like we spoke briefly about a minute ago. Well, I was just going to say, I was just, just going to say, we were going to talk about the website and need to update it. As we mentioned earlier, we're going to be meeting uh, on July 10th, the Wednesday meeting with the uh, board. We have a website gentleman coming in to give us a proposal. What we're hoping to do is videos like this, we're hoping to have a link right on the website. So you can go anytime, download from the website. We're really, really looking to pretty much update the website in the last week. Where it's pretty much interactive, Google search, everything will drive people to not only to the chamber, but then off of the chamber to all the businesses. Not just restaurants, restaurants, liquor stores, bakeries, uh, you know, uh, retail shops. We're really trying to get it so that if someone's in the Seaport District and you know they come out of a convention and they Google a Boston restaurant or someplace to dine or something for tourists. It'll immediately shoot them right over to the North End Chamber and or one of the businesses that are set up uh, through the chamber. What we're looking to do is we're looking to have the gentleman come in, work on the chamber website, and then as a service for all the vendors, actually have him at a discounted rate come and work with each individual business. You can hire him at a discounted rate because he'll be taking care of the chamber to update your websites, to make them more, you know, uh, handheld app available to really get it so that it interacts with the Chamber's website, so that everybody is kind of flowing off of not only the Chamber, but each other. You know, if someone's coming into the neighborhood, we want them to be able to get access to anything in the neighborhood. I'm sure a lot of you see these people on the corners with their iPhones, whether it's their GPSing or they're looking for some place to eat, drink, shop, they're on them all the time. <coughs> what we're looking to do is we're looking to drive the business in the neighborhood to that iPhone. To, you know, to yourself. Let's say you have an existing um, website that's already um, app friendly. Right. Are you going to be able to link, if you're a chamber member, link it on automatically even if you don't use Correct. the yes. person you have assistance yes. or if I have something already set up? Yes, that's a very good Yeah, You don't have to use this gentleman. All we're looking to do is to have someone who's available. He's going to be, his proposal to us is he's going to be doing a maintenance on the website, whether it's him or another gentleman, monthly. So it's not going to be something where he comes in and he sets it up and then he's gone. He's going to be the go-to guy. You could contact him and say, I want to have a link under the name of my business that goes automatically to my YouTube video. Or to whatever, whatever it is you want to link in, you contact him and he'd set it up for you. So the, the, the actual website of the chain is going to expand, but it's going to be much, much more functional for everybody involved. Any other questions on it?
discussion about Cross Street. As you know, there were lots of things that were promised for the Cross Street area after the big dig. Some of them happened, some of them didn't. Um, and that's MassDOT property. So it's a little bit complicated right now because it is MassDOT and the city's involved and there's some kinks that have to be worked out. But from our standpoint, what we'd like to do is participate in the activity on um, Cross Street by having a portable kiosk there, an information booth with brochures and pamphlets and advertisers, businesses that are established to give people maps and information about the North End. Uh, we have somebody who is uh, working with us to donate the actual structure, but right now we need permission to put it somewhere. And we don't, we're not there yet because it's really, I don't know if we've had any future history, but um, it's just something that has to be worked out because, as I say, it's mass spot land. So stay tuned. We are going to stay on top of that. We do want to work with both the city and the state on this so that we have a presence there at the entrance of North Heaven. Yes? I'm Joe from the full office Yes. Uh, last week I was on vacation, but in my absence, uh, we received a violation, digital violation for uh, the sidewalk sign. It's along the same it's on city property. It says uh, occupying city property without displaying it out permanently. I called the phone number on the citation. I'm going to appeal it. He said to appeal it. But he said the sidewalk signs are eight things that are not allowed on any city's property for the entire city.
time the whole town is actually going to start uh, accepting advertising on their trolleys. Uh, but really why I'm here today is for our solar recycling kiosks. Uh, we did a 10-year deal with the city of Boston, um, and these are Bluetooth Wi-Fi uh, recycling kiosks that uh, actually tells the city of public, public works. Uh, we have a huge team uh, in, in, their, uh, in their offices, and it shows when a uh, actually recycling kiosk is 75% full or 90% full. So they actually only go out and actually clean out the ones that are 90% full. You save the city a ton of man hours. Uh, we actually buy the units. Um, so our first 18 months of operating, we're going to save the city of Boston just over three million dollars for man hours as well as uh, recycling. So uh, and along with that contract, we actually have the opportunity to place the units on crosswalks where people are actually crossing the streets. Actually, when, uh, right up when, uh, from a big dig, as soon as you come out and you know, the first thing you're going to see is one of these uh, recycling units. So they're great for advertising. Um, Tony did a three-month campaign, uh, as she just noted. And what we would like to do, uh, you know, having grassroots and having local advertising on that are really, that's what's key to the city of Boston. So, um, we would like to offer uh, that opportunity to, to everyone here in the North End. Uh, we actually have 250 units on the streets right now. Uh, and by August 1st, I'm going to have another 150, so 400 units on the streets of Boston. Uh, like I said, they're at every single major uh, intersection, all in, in every neighborhood we can think of. Um, and, uh, so, so it's a great opportunity from a brand perspective to have that little Italy message as well as having your local message saying, hey, why don't you come over to Florentine's where it was today or, or, or come over to Antico Forum. So wherever, uh, so that's what we're, that's what we're here about today. And uh, I'm hoping to rate to buy one of these on a monthly basis at $800 a unit. Uh, and we are offering it to um, the North End for three hundred dollars a unit. So if, uh, if, if, if the Chamber of Commerce is going to pick up uh, half of that or some portion of that, and you have it, so, so it's a very inexpensive way to advertise your uh, local business. Uh, I've got some apps to show you. Uh, we've had everything from uh, Higgs tickets to uh, Nesson Television uh, to Anheuser Busch. So we've had local advertisers as well as national advertisers, and we continue to. That's all I have. Is if there's any questions or yeah. What about placement? What, where are they? Do you mean, do you got one put in front of your business or, or is it um, placement? Well, we actually deal with the city of Boston from a placement perspective, and because of the streets of North End, I mean, uh, they they are four feet by you know two two and a half feet wide. So because of the streets are a little bit smaller in North End, we really uh, surround the North End on, on the outskirts rather than. Unfortunately, downtown because they are, you know, tough to get around. But if there is an area that you'd like to to, to, to seek out, so to have the ability to speak to the city of Boston and place that. If anybody has any interest in sharing um, one of the barrels that they choose, the chamber is normally open Monday through Friday, seven to seven
Uh, we're just at the initial stages of, of trying to get this going, but we have Ian Gibson and his team from Rico that would go first, and then we've got Mike from the Insurance. Okay, so take away Dan Gibson here. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I, my name is Dan Gibson. We are the uh, Linko Insurance Group. My partners are the President Joe Lynch and CFO for Principe. Uh, first of all, go on the board. Thanks for having us here. We are we are endorsed by the Chamber Insurance Trust. We do work nationally with chamber groups like your own to design specific insurance plans with your board permission at a discount for its members, from restaurants to taverns to apartment buildings to retail stores, anything you may do. We're very proud to be a member of the association, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to President Joe Lynch, who's going to talk a little bit about our process. And we're also proud to have our friends that have plenty of business for many insurance agencies in Boston and North End, so we're proud to be here. We have offices in Daniel Hall, Boston, uh, and over in Burlington. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dan, and, and it is really a pleasure to be here and also to uh, be a new member of the Chamber. We look forward to working with as many of you as we possibly can. And um, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, I've actually been in the insurance business for 35 plus years, and uh, with two girls just graduated college, it'll probably be another 35 uh, by the time I get through with it. But um, I've touched on just about every uh, aspect of the insurance business, uh, but over the years uh, we've really specialized in industry-specific or uh, association-specific type products. So um, the chamber is uh, chamber association, very good example of that. Um, we build our programs, importantly, with member people, and so what we ask uh, of groups like this is to. Tell us, don't, don't be afraid to sit down and tell us, this is what we need. There's always some, uh, something that's bugging you, something you can never get, something that always seems to be a problem. And we'd like to hear about that because we can incorporate uh, those issues into our programs and design something that's even more, uh, more specialized for your industry. I know primarily a lot of, a lot of restaurants, hospitality industries, and that is one of the industries that we've done a great deal of work on. In fact, uh, Dan and I have done some, uh, some panel presentations at national trade shows um, on such things as liquor liability plans, which is really a highly specialized area. Um, so, uh, as I said, please feel free to, uh, uh, to speak with us at any point and let us know what your needs are. Um, and that, does, that goes beyond just property and liability insurance. Uh, health insurance is a big issue these days. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. It seems to be changing every day. There are different opinions. A lot of you may not be terribly impacted. Some of you may. Um, but that's something we'll be addressing as things go along. We also have some more limited type uh, benefits that are designed for uh, part-time employees. And, um, and we can talk to you about that as well. Um, we, we've worked with, uh, with groups anywhere from mom and pop stores to Fortune 500. So uh, we're, we're well equipped. We have uh, over 40 insurance companies that we work with, um, and, and I, I'm sure that one, at least one of those, will be a, will be a good fit for virtually any situation. Um, workers' compensation is another uh, is another sometimes problem that uh, that we have a great deal of experience with and we work with. But we really uh, we really try to build good, especially enhanced programs and. Uh, of course, price is always a consideration. We want to get you the best possible product at a very competitive price. Um, it's extremely important to get things like liquor liability that you know all the little nuances of liquor liability. Um, I, can't, I can't emphasize that enough because uh, it's not a run of the mill product. And um, there really probably are very few agents, insurance people around. Uh, the state that have a tremendous amount of experience in that area. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's one very important thing. Um, our service rapid response, we will get back to you uh, the same day as you call us. That's one of our commitments. And um, we do have uh, also in house claim investigation. Now, this is an extremely important area. This is one of the things that 
Dan does. Um, if you have a claim, we get right on it in-house. And the idea there is to stop or mitigate the claim before it gets out of control. So that's one of the other services we offer as well. Um, I, with that, I'll, I'll say we look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Uh, please take your kits. Uh, give us a call anytime. We're always available. And uh, Dan, would you like to add anything to that? Or no, her? I would just um, say on this issue of claims and a bunch of the folks who have restaurants or businesses in the North End have assisted with immediate rapid response. Sometimes the media gets a hold of an incident, uh, God knows of the situation I'm speaking of, and they misrepresent. And that can be very harmful to the business, whatever your business is. So we take very seriously what we do. We're very proud to be associated with the folks and look forward to developing hopefully a plan that can meet all of your needs at a discount. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.
they stand behind all of the business people and the property owners, you know, commercial property owners, the best intent. And we know that going through the process is pretty tedious as far as dealing with other neighborhood users. So we're not trying to make that type of thing, you know, with this, uh, with our meetings. What we're trying to do is just give you additional support for when you do go in front of zoning or licensing, that the licensing board and zoning board knows that the change is behind you. Also, as far as organizations seeking donations, everybody has their own small uh, you know, pool of charitable uh, organizations that they deal with. If you have someone calling you for a donation, gladly forward them to somebody at the chain. That's part of what we're trying to do. We're trying to have a certain amount of funds set aside every year to donate, to, whether it's a neighborhood group, uh, or a neighborhood fundraiser, things like that. We're trying to get them, not take them away from them, trying to relieve you from constantly getting called for $100, $50, $200. We're glad to send them to the chamber. We're going to discuss them at Wednesday meetings, and then on the monthly meetings, we'll be announcing what we're giving our checks to. So then it becomes involved in that process. Any comment? Hi, Chris. Are those meetings that you have every Wednesday, are those open? So if you want to drop in, you can just drop in? Uh, basically, they're basically just all board members. Right. Uh, if you had something that you wanted to present, you would gladly contact any one of us and a team. And we can set some time. So, so those are closed, unless yeah, you have they, something that's going yeah, basically what it is now is it's the meetings that, it takes a lot to get all these things together. Right, right, right. Whether it's advertising or commercials. Yeah. So we try to meet every Wednesday so that we're trying to spread the responsibility out over everybody on the board as opposed to one or two people because we feel that we can get a lot more things done. Okay. But there's a lot more people involved. Okay. But if there was something that was an issue and, and someone wanted to come, by all means, just contact myself, Tony, Donna, Frank, uh, Damien, any one of us, okay. and we'll, we'll set some time aside for them. Any other questions? We've been, we as a board have been meeting on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock just to get this off the ground, to work on the agenda for these meetings and to, to, to have some focus as to where we're going with the chamber. We haven't, we haven't gotten to the point yet that we've been inviting people to come to those meetings because we very much want to stay focused on what we needed to do to deal with some of the, the uh, advertising and the tax and tax service. We would be more than happy to hear from you. I think that really what we had in mind for folks coming for our support was to actually be coming to these Tuesday meetings. You can let the board know we meet every Wednesday that you have um, an issue that you'd like to support with or you have um, if something to do with your business, if you're opening your business, changing your business, and then we want to be supportive of you. We don't want you to have to go yet through another process like you're already having to do with two neighborhood councils. We're just here to support you. So what the Wednesday meetings are really right now for the board to meet to talk about all the different things that we're trying to do as benefits for you. And uh, we may not even continue meeting on a weekly basis as time goes on and won't have to, but right now we've had to put together these kind of agendas to get the tax and time started separate. Um, the other thing that you were going to talk about too is um, donations. Alright, so now I'm going to open it up to you. Um, we want to hear from you. Any comments, thoughts, what you'd like for the chamber, what, what we can do to help you, what we can do to make you more successful on the floor is open. I have uh, only a quick question. Sure. <laughs> we have a problem when the people are part of Parson 7. Yeah. They can with uh, three hours of the day to uh, go price. Right. But uh, we need a little more time because we have a fight on Sunday. Some of people take a longer time with <coughs> They go back or they, and they charge us $28. It's wrong. It takes to make it three hours and a half to four hours. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Thank you, Lisa. That's, that's a very good suggestion. That's just the type of thing the chamber should be working on. Thank you. So also, thank you. I did have a conversation with Sal after the last meeting about trying to see if we can maybe get small signs for some of the restaurants. Good. I mean, I've been in an authentic for years and years, and then people realized that there was validated bonding there because a lot of the businesses don't even have the little sign on the side stating that they do validate. So a lot of people, you see them driving around the block with nowhere to go. Now granted, the parking spots over there, a lot of people complain that it's full all the time, but it's no different than some of the waterfront. 
restaurant. So in talking with Sal, we're going to try to, one of the meetings coming forward, to get some type of a decal, small, that will verify the restaurants that will validate the parking, which hopefully will help Thank people you. to come into not only restaurants, but you know, retail spaces, yeah. knowing that they can get the parking validation. So Thank that you. is something that's on our radar. Excellent. Thank you, people. Anybody else have a great idea like that? I, I, it's not a way I, I hear about parking. Um, okay. Mine is just about Sandler Street. Okay. I just want to say something. That Damien said something really important that he sometimes goes places and people don't know that the North End is Little Italy. Right. And I, as a business owner, on the very end of Sandler Street, and people know our struggles in the Bay. People don't even know that there's restaurants on Salem Street, but they found the North End. We need to let people know that the North End of Little Italy is greater, is broader than Hanover Street. And I think it's important that, you know, as the business owners, we're willing to, you know, pay for, Frank has a beautiful little thing with all those little signs of Italy in front of Quattro. That's a great little piece. We don't need the city to buy for us. Like, we'll pitch in, we'll do it as the business owners of Salem Street, but we need support, like, the city doesn't let us do anything. We can't put Benjamin out. We can't put the the boards out that he got fined from. Sorry, I forgot what business we were from. But you know, the rules don't apply for all the businesses in the city. Like, I don't understand how there are some rules for Salem Street and different rules for Hanover Street. It, it's not fair, and it in essence it it deters people from the entire on that, not just from Salem. I mean, we're taking a hit from the seaport. We're taking a hit from the back bay. If we're going to bank on the north end, we have to do it as a unit. Salem, Hanover, down where the people is. It, it's all of it. It can't just be like, okay, we're going to put Christmas lights up. Let's put them up in here. It has to be the whole north end, even Cooper Street, even North Margin Street, the whole thing. That's what people love. That's what people remember. Good meal. There's a hundred restaurants in the north end that are going to give you a good meal. But that visual, that's what people will remember. That's what will make the difference between us and right now the seaport. We're all taking a hit from this. You know, everybody knows it. But I think it's really important that we do some stuff for sales. The whole idea. If you can see that in your videos in the film that show, that can be part of the next film. Show and, and, and they show the old church, and that's great. But I don't know how many of you guys have walked down Salem Street after they did that construction. It looks like a third world country. They put a sidewalk in front of all of I swear to God, your leg has to be five feet long to get over that sidewalk. It's it's just treated like like we're not part of the North End. It's really really hard. There's a lot of really good restaurants on that street that suffer because no attention. I know for a fact that if that sidewalk was put someplace on Hanover Street, all the hell would have broken. But because it's on Salem Street, because it's in front of Bogus, it doesn't matter. Well, what about Monica's? They have three business over there. I mean, you know, it's gotta be the same for everybody. It can't just be one street. It's gotta be a unit, the North End. It's the entire village. That's it's, what it's, it's gotta exactly be. exactly what we're working on. And, and yeah. what, what we're trying to do first is um, establish the best way of communicating with people and that's going to be our website. Um, our, the majority of our time next Wednesday is going to be on the website and we will, we're, we're going to address the entire North End. I'm on the fringes of the North End and I'm not a restaurant and I'm part of this community so we're trying to incorporate not just restaurants, not just Camden Street, not just Salem Street, but the entire North End. We are very encouraging large um, landlords, uh, multiple building landlords to, to start joining so that we can get you know, landlords involved. And you know, the more people we have that join this committee, the stronger we'll be and we can branch out and, and incorporate the entire North End. But that is exactly our goal. Yeah, and even like Kyle and I, we have the, the buildings right across the street from each other. We have the idea that, you know, back when I was a kid, they used to hang the, the lights in the face and stuff. We can't use it. They won't let us hang a banner. They won't let us, you know, that end of the street is really desolate. It, it's like the last three restaurants. Now after the construction, it's even worse. You know, we, we got to help Salem Street a little bit. It, it's, it's a little crazy down there. Well, we spoke about this in the last meeting. Uh, City Hall pays attention to numbers. And I think the more that we have growing numbers of people at this, at this meeting, uh, and future meetings, and they get the word out that 
hundreds of people are coming to the Chamber of Commerce. They're all business owners. They're all concerned. Um, that's going to be a very powerful message, and I think we'll never give us a lot more leeway to. One of the things we can start with Sailor Street is this holiday season, where you know, we can decorate, you know, the poles get decorated. But those lights don't work on Salem Street, not one of those strands. I've asked them a hundred times to take the strand down. It's been up there for years, and they refuse Maybe to take them down. Like going in town. Maybe there's a way that they can tie into the I wish they would. I, I wish they I'm would. I'm saying like a lot of the wreaths and things that go up on the poles, what maybe we could do is one of the meetings prior to the holiday season when those go up, maybe we can try to map it out so that it's more inclusive of Salem Street, parts of Salem Street, over the fleet street, you know, and uh, we, we are planning, I know we've been talking, we are planning on having <coughs> Sal and Aaron come to some of the meetings, but through this time here we're trying to not exclude them, we're trying to really get a lot of these things rolling, because this is going to be the second meeting, and a lot of the things you're talking about, we are looking at them. We're trying to make it, as you said, a problem for everyone, right. not just for one street, or right. one type of business. And I think we'll all benefit. Absolutely. I think when they realize it's not that it's just not one street, but right. every street, it, it's for all of our benefit. You know? One more comment on this whole thing. There is a beautification committee in the North End um, that many people in the office have taken that committee at the very well the North End Waterfront Neighborhood Council and others. We are going to be meeting with that committee to see how we can work jointly with them. And just to give an example of Christmas, and not we want to just stay focused on that, but we have um, the Greenway and the Greenway Service, and they do their little thing at Christmas time, and maybe six people show up. And then we have a little tree lighting on Cross Street, and maybe ten people show up. So what we'd like to do is coordinate with all these groups like they do in other towns, where they have a magical time at Christmas time, where they have, you go from one event on the Greenway, you go down to Filippo something, and then you kind of like something's going on that in the town. And you're moving all <coughs> over the South End for a Christmas stroll, yeah, to see the beautiful school. lights, to see Christmas lights being illuminated, just like they do in places like Woodstock, Vermont, where I live for a while, had a bed breakfast, it was fabulous. And they did it with Kenny Bunkford. We can, we can do all those things, but we need to work together as a community, come up with great ideas, and then all work together to make it happen. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Or one of the things we're trying to do is to invite people here to provide information for us too. At our next meeting, we're going to invite Matt Stock to present the current program. What it means to go on in, what the alternative groups are, and how long this will last. That would be a good meeting to come to. I have a nice, very, very nice presentation that I've seen. Those are some of the things we're going to try to do. We have firsthand the opportunity to talk with you. Richie, did you have something you want to say? Yeah, uh, I've been I've been down there for 20 years, and all of a sudden, in the last two months, I got my third month the other day. I got a ticket at 8:03 in the morning for my practice yeah. step over here on the sidewalk. Yeah. Well, I live in Stoneham, and they pick it up at night, and I don't get in until 11 o'clock. I never had a problem with that, but they give me a ticket at 8 o'clock in the morning for 50 dollars. But not having the barrel, in. so apparently I have to drive in, put it in, and go back home, and then come back. And when I open, this is something new. Eight o'clock in the morning, I gotta take. Give me a hundred bucks a week, I'll bring it in for you. I actually got three hundred and fifty tickets. I'm calling that line of Tina's office, and after I go through that phone call, I get to hit the lottery for a million dollars if I want to do anything about it. They did not. They don't think of no money. City of Boston, uh, City of Boston, Boston. 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 seven o'clock in the morning, original barrel. You know, I actually did walk there and, and tell him my whole thing because the streets are a mess getting in, and I come in from out of town as well. Right, seven o'clock in the morning, they want the barrels in by. Well, you can't put them out before a certain time. You have to get them right. off the sidewalk at a certain time, so that you have a very small window. Um, I keep that alleyway next to my roof, my business as clean as a whistle. Yeah. And I put them out every night. I have a contract to pick it up every night, like everyone else. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, after 20 years, they give me tickets. Yeah. I called them. They told me that's the law. So I told them I'm going to throw the garbage all over the ground let the rats eat it. There won't be that much next time. No, if you go up there, as many tickets. So the, the important thing we're talking about all these citations, right? So the important thing, I mean, I'm looking at this room right now. I'm just seeing mostly people in the food industry. And for the, the Chamber of Commerce to be stronger, we all have to try to bring someone in 
you know, fellow restaurateurs, more people from yeah. the not from Hanover Street. You know, we have Soul Optics, which is great. We need more of the clothing people, maybe some of the salons. But if we get more members and we have more money and more clout and more votes, we can put a sign on Salem Street that says Welcome to Little Italy, just like Chinatown has the gate. We can talk to our, our, our selected, our officials, and we can say, hey, how come we're getting fined for having our clean barrels out that are sealed, and how come, you know, residents or building owners aren't getting fined when they just throw their garbage out of so, oh, no, so in order for us to have that power, in order for us to have that power, we need more revenue. We need more members in this chamber. We need more people to pay their dues. We need more people to participate in this chamber. Then we go to City Hall and say, look, this is ridiculous. You know, you can't do this to us. All these little things are crippling us. You should allow us signage. You should allow us this. You should give us until 10 a.m. to bring our clean barrels, you know, back to where they belong. But we need more people to show up at these meetings, to pay their dues, and to be part of the business community. Otherwise, we will not achieve these things. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead. Go ahead. We also need the right people here to hear this conversation, to hear these concerns. Why are you writing this? It's not on the team of Call his office, not enough time, short notice. What is he advertised by CPI? No, uh, actually, so, just, to, just so you know, I spoke to Sal this morning. He has a PR rating. I'm just yeah. saying, there's nothing wrong with that. He's not. Yeah. Or, or yeah. So, he did speak. I sent him a text to him. There's nothing wrong with that. We need to have something here. The person that should be here in this thing, or the person down here, about this problem, they should be here. We should try to get someone here. At least one of the other. Okay. That's Okay. That's good. Well, Eric Michael's office is here, and it he is being represented very ably by his staff member. I'm here. She's here, and she's listening. And uh, Sal did call this point and apologize and said he couldn't be here exactly. He was here at the last meeting, but he had um, he had caught up with the R.A. Did you have something you want to say? Yeah, I mentioned last time about the Facebook post. Um, we are. I mean, we're up to you guys.